afternoon session here on the final day of play at the Austrian Darts Open in Vienna. And as was the case with our second match of the afternoon between Jamie Bain and Martin Schindler, this once again is a massive, massive opportunity for these two players to advance to a European Tour quarterfinal. Chris Doby has been there before. He was very impressive in beating Robert Thornton and Dave Chisnell in reaching the last days of the German Darts Masters last year. But for Kim Villianen, it would be a step into the unknown. Both players really catching the eye this weekend for very, very different reasons. Doby has only dropped one leg. That was against David Pallett in his opening match, winning 6-1. He blitzed his way through his second match against Stephen Bunting. But for Kim Villianen, a 6-5 win against Christoph Ratajski when Ratajski had match darts. And then, yesterday, seeing off the number two seed and a winner of three European Tour events this year, Peter Wright. They come together for this one for a place in the quarterfinals and a chance to take on either Kim Hybrex or Joe Cullen. Paul Nicholson back alongside me for this one. All set up very nicely for either of these two, isn't it? It has indeed, hasn't it? First line, Chris, to throw first. Game on. Spent a lot of time with both of these guys this weekend. Had the privilege of actually speaking to Kim Villianen a little bit on Friday night after his win oh, against Ratajski. Oh, that's wrong graphic. No scoreboard at the moment, but you heard the call there of George Noble, 180 for Chris Doby to start things off. 83. Every European tour I spend time with Chris Doby. It's hard not to spend time with this young man. Just the wrong side. Well, five perfect darts out of six there for Chris Doby. Ideal start for the 27-year-old from Northumberland. And it does make you think, who's the 62. pressure on in this game? Maybe Chris Doby a little bit more than Villianen. He's been on pretty much a free roll since he beat Ratajski. Just get the feeling that the Finn is maybe feeling the heat on that stage today. He's just wafting that shirt a little bit. But he was very kind to give us a bit of a finish lesson the other night, wasn't he? Yeah. Just talked us through uh, one or two pronunciations. It's just a nice insight into his life, um, the way he has to balance the darts with the day-to-day -day job that he has back home as well. Yeah, he's back to work tomorrow, I believe. Yeah, he's uh, qualified for Leverkusen next weekend, but he has to go home for two or three days to fulfil his duty with Mitsubishi. Easy one. Well, Villianen won't be uh, panicking, or Villianen will not be panicking just yet. He was 2-0 down against Peter Rice. He took him a while to get going. And OK, Charles he's lost the first leg here Christo. as well. Chris Toby finishing that one off Game in 14 darts. So, uh, very neat and tidy start for Chris Toby as well. Looking very good. And he always looks good when he's throwing Chris Toby, but you can just tell when he's, he's confident and fluid. There's no perspiration on the brow. Stone faced, really. And I was trying to find a connection between 140. the northeast of England and Finland. You know, because I told a little nugget story yesterday of when Northumberland played Merseyside back in 1999. 170, Kim Billion is definitely not going to go away in this match, that's for sure. But I found a little connection between the northeast of England and Finland. 100. And that's because the Finland Open has been won in the past by two people from the northeast of England. Those people being Paul Knighton in 2010, or Butch as we call him, big lad, and Paul Jennings, very talented right hander from the Hartlepool area of the northeast. And that was the following year in 2011. 177 and 139 for Villian and gets him into position here on 125. Treble 19 would leave the bullseye, but it's not to be this time around. Doby is. Potentially going to pounce here on 164. This would be an absolute heartbreaker for Kim Villianen if he were to take it out, and he might well take it out as well. Doby looking at 19s again. will come back upstairs here. With that first dart, he will have fancied that so much because it was perfect. But who can hit the 68? That's a good miss, you know. It is. It's not too bad. As long as he made commends and finished the job, but he didn't. And Doby himself is looking at 68 here. He's now looking at double four. And he takes out double four for a 2 0 lead. And as I said, Villianen was 2 0 down yesterday against Peter Wright. It just took him a while to get going. There were encouraging signs, though, in that second leg for Villianen with the 
177 and the 139, but he well, he could have done maybe with an extra dart. And that first dart scuppered him slightly. And still, Chris Dorby's only lost one leg in this tournament, which yeah. is, that's just sick. Astonishing. 14 legs won, one lost. 45. Starting to look like Christoph Ratajski's qualification ratio, which is bordering on the incomprehensible. Well, this is a significant 61. weekend for Chris Doby in more ways than one because he's not made it beyond the first round of any of the European Tour events he's qualified for this year, so he's certainly improved on that. But going into this weekend, he was 33rd in the Pro Tour order of merit, uh, just 250 quid or so behind Justin Pipe. Now, with the world match play on the horizon as well, a good weekend here for Chris Doby. Might well make all the difference. The world match play featuring the top 16 in the PDC order of merit and then the top 16 qualifiers from the Pro Tour order of merit. So he's in the frame once again. The cutoff point, I think, is early July. 140. But there's, a, there's a cluster of players around that 32 mark. Something like £3,000 separating seven players between Ronnie Hybrex and Vincent van der Voort. 60. And uh, Doby is very much in the mix. He was ecstatic that Ronnie Hybrex was defeated last night by Mensa Sulevic and the fact that some of his other rivals have been eliminated too. So now he can do himself the favours instead of relying on others. Yeah, yeah exactly. Not doing well, himself any harm here. Yeah, Villian and it's down to 147 on the Doby throw. 96. The snooker shot, 147. Only three bits of perfection needed on this one, though. A lot of people ask what's harder, a nine dart or 147. I think it's a 147. Now, will you look at 19s here, first of all? Yes, he will. 66 left. Single 16, gambled for double nine now. Oh, you require 32. Well, the approach player was there, but Villianen can steal one back here it by taking out double 16, yeah. and he's back in the hunt, and just so many similarities with that performance against Rovers. Peter Wright yesterday for yeah. Kim Villianen. I don't think Chris's dad, Gordon, would make me saying this, but if you take the glasses off Kim Villianen, he doesn't look that dissimilar to to Chris's dad. 140. Well, we'll, Same frame. We'll, we'll put that one to the committee later, Paul. <laughs> Only difference is, Kim Villianen is in a short sleeve shirt and as incredible a dark player as Gordon Doby is, Chris's dad, he always plays in a jumper. Old school stuff. And you wouldn't want to do that here this weekend. No, you wouldn't. Well, we've, Villianen, seen, we've seen some historic photos. We've seen people playing in jackets. Crazy. Well, it was one of the talking points of yesterday, the win over Peter Wright, but the fact he did it with an average of 85.14, it was the lowest winning average of the day. Wright himself averaged 97.66, and it was just a, a perfect illustration of how the discrepancies can materialise when you look at the statistics 92. like that. Average 96 in that win against Ratajski, who missed one match start at double 16 during that one. But Villianen, Villianen, I should say, uh, that day was exemplary on his doubles at times. Four from six in the first four legs that he won. Then went off the boil a little bit, but just found that little something extra towards 59. the end in the final leg. You know what else as well? I don't think there's going to be many people who would want to draw him for next Friday in Leverkusen because he's obviously got a bit of confidence. But his tail up this weekend. No matter stuff. what happens here, he's going to be a bit of a dicey draw for someone in Germany next week. Yeah, Villianen coming through the qualifier for Leverkusen when they had a cluster of them all together in Oslo in the middle of May, and he came through for this one and for Leverkusen as well. Now he's looking at the bull. 86. Well, Chris Dorby seems to have just gone off the boil a little bit here, and he's gifting more darts of doubles to Villianen. But you never know. 16. This will hurt Kim Villianen, but it's not to be for Doby. He starts at double 16 for a 3 1 lead, and Villianen can level things up with 9 and double 16 here now. And that's the way to go. Just so many similarities yesterday. Just needed those first two legs to find his stride and settle himself down. I was talking to Chris this morning, he was having a 
There's nine darts practice on stage. You look ready, cool, calm, and collected as usual. And we were just talking about the effect of when the arenas get really hot and how that affects a player's body. Well, a lot of the guys have been talking about how their hands swell up. Because when you get hotter, the body swells a bit. And the practice room, which is down on stage right, quite low. It's quite cool in there. There's no real air conditioner, but everything's been blocked off. No real heat coming through, so it's a lovely room to be in. And when you get out there, it's drastically different. So you've got to be able to play when your body feels slightly different. Yeah. Two really good characters, these two as well, by the way. You see Doby around. He's always happy to say hello and have a chat, and he's always got a smile on his face, especially now he's really in a good place in his personal life as well, having just become a father and chatting to Kim for the first time the other night as well was really insightful too. He, he, we touched upon quite a lot of stuff, you know, wearing a Liverpool shirt and we talked about the Finnish connection with Liverpool. He was happy to talk about his hometown, the fact it gets dark at half past one in the afternoon in Finland as well in the winter time. It was, uh, it was an engaging half hour or so. Anyway, 1-3-1 one, one for a 3-2 lead here. Not going to be on this first occasion. Chance has cost him that, but he'll try and set it up as best he can. 90 away. Another hard three data here for Dolby. Two trouble 19s. Would have double 16, but he can really pressure this 90. Oh, he's looking for the 17s 82. there. And okay, no, potentially no great damage done because he's on 64, but Villian here is on 90. Chris Dolby would much rather be on something below 60. Trust me. Single 20. Bullseye for the lead. The lead he has. And the bullseye was quite kind to him last night against Peter Wright. And it's kind again to him now. It's another break of throw. But this time it means that Villian and having trailed 2 0 now leads 3 2. We're starting to see possibly the real Kim Villian and the person who dominates the Nordic Baltic darting circuit. The person who has come through in the last couple of years and played some darts on TV and on the European Tour, but maybe it's time for someone from Finland to really make an impact. Yeah. And I'm not just talking about the Ulf factor. I'm talking about someone doing it on the dartboard and with the rest of the PDC family. Derby watched by Chris Quantock, and uh, I believe that's one of his oh, friends Jesus. from home as well, who's made the journey out here to Vienna for this weekend. Villianen doesn't seem to have uh, any backing here this weekend. It's a, a, well, it's a bit of an ordeal to get from Finland to uh, Vienna anyway for, for the weekend. Yep. You tend to find that the, uh, the Finland guys always come on their own. They do a bit of a Lee Harvey Oswald, <laughs> the, lone, the lone gunman. What? 60. <laughs> <laughs> don't, go any, uh, don't go near any uh, school book depositories. Or stay away from the sixth floor. One <laughs> sir. There's something about the people from Scandinavia, though. They're ice cold, aren't they? It's got a very deadly demeanour. It's just, well, he's they don't to, get nervous. He's had to uh, be exactly that way. He's had to keep his cool, not just here this weekend, but in qualifying. He had 265 wins in qualifying, as well as the 265 wins on stage here. Harry Ukula in the very first round of qualifying, 65. Marco Cantelay, 65 uh, as well, in the final round of qualifying. And then Ratajski and Wright, 65 here as well. Well, that is, again, an exemplary approach from Kim Villianen. Doby, 64 away here. And yet again, he's got to take out a huge oh, three data to get on the board 50. again. And Chris Doby's got to stop the rot. He really does, because it looks like Villianen is going 4-2 up the way he's been hitting double 16. No so problem, 3 out of 3. Really eye-catching stuff just now, you have to say he's quietly going about his assassination business here. 96. Really lots to admire about the way that Kim Villianen has gone about his business here today. Doby, Doby didn't do a great deal wrong. For, I mean, since then, he's not done a great deal wrong either, but he's just missed that. Crucial down to a double 16, didn't he, in the previous leg or the leg before, and that just opened the door for Villian to find the break. We say it time and time again, you know, in a, in a best of 11 format, you know, the fine margins really are accentuated, aren't they? And Dobie's certainly found that here. 
100. I guarantee you this as well. Chris Dolby did not underestimate Kim Billionen today at all. He doesn't underestimate anybody. Just to put this into some perspective as well, this is only Villian's second appearance on the European Tour. He made his debut at the European Open in Dusseldorf last summer. He beat Martin Schindler 6-1 that day as well. That's had a bit of perspective put on it too. He then lost 6-1 to Gary Anderson. Uh, but he will be back next uh, weekend as well for his third European Tour event. I remember that weekend, Rob. That was the first time I ever met you. Well, it lives in your memory, Paul. <laughs> I've got a decent memory. I always remember the first time I meet people. Now... You never get a second chance to make a first impression, Paul. Indeed, indeed. It doesn't matter how good Mr. Villianen is. He can't finish 168. But Chris Dolby can finish 72. Stops 20. the rock with this. Yeah. Well, it would only 72. be a holder throw as well, but it, as he says, significantly is the fact that he can stop the rock. 16, then four tops to trim the deficit to 4-3. And Villianen has just being invited back to the hockey here and the way he's playing and the way he's finishing I would not be surprised at all to see him take this out he's taken a moment or two here as Doby wipes himself down at the back of the stage another one of them for double 16 again oh so close to a piece of genius a missed dart at double 16 for a 5-2 lead He needs this badly. Well, Dobie can't afford to give Villianen another shot at double 16 because he surely will Ten. take it out with three darts in hand. And that Two could be another 32. big, big turning point in the outcome of this match as well. He has been very, very effective on double 16. Maybe just feeling the tension here now as he closes in double eight instead. Pressure, what pressure, says Kim yeah. Villianen. Chris Dobie really feeling the heat now. He's lost five legs on the spin, and Villianen is one away from a first ever European hey, Tour quarterfinal in only his second Game European one. Tour event. What a story we have in them. Stories everywhere you turn this weekend, or potential stories wherever you look. Martin Schindler reaching his first European Tour quarterfinal. Christo Reyes, for so long, couldn't find his way into a European Tour quarterfinal. He's now back in the hunt once again this weekend. And here, Kim Villianen, well, could well trump a lot of them here. He could well emulate the uh, the great Magnus Karras, who had a good run in, in Gibraltar. Yeah. And we talked 100. about players who don't hold a tour card. Not going that deep, old chestnut. Going deep in tournaments. There's a, a touchy subject to the guys with the tour cards. They hate it when non-tour card guys do well. They hate it. Well, he's not there yet, Villingham. We do with a treble or a big treble here. 54. Likewise, Doby. Well, he saw on Chris Doby's face, in between legs, just what he thought of the way he's been playing. He uttered the word rubbish. Yeah. We said after he won the second leg that he'd won 14 legs and conceded one this weekend. He's now just lost five on the bounce. And Villian is in the mood for more here. 140. 82 away now. Kim Villian, has he got a nickname? I don't believe he has. I'll have to sort that out then. 84. There's lots to work with there. 82. 82 for the match. The Flying Finn on the verge. On the verge. He's looking at tops, and he takes out tops, and, and Kill Villian's story continues here.